My writing desk is probably my most important item in my writing arsenal. It is the place where I am inspired, motivated and encouraged to be productive. It is where I'm comfortable and where I'm immediately into my routine when I sit down. It's a space where my writing becomes consistent, where I can achieve real in-depth focus and where I just feel happy. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about my writing desk and how the specific items on it help me stay organized, motivated, focused and productive. Now, firstly, let's talk about the aesthetics because they're really, really important to me. I like to keep my desk aesthetically pleasing. This varies by season. I often bring in daffodils and tulips during early spring. I bring in toadstools, pumpkins and various nature bits from my dog walks during autumn. And during winter, there's often big drip marks from a well-filled mug of hot chocolate there on my desk. I like to keep my desk and my office for that matter as aesthetically nice as possible for a couple of reasons. Now, when I say aesthetically nice, I don't necessarily mean tidy. I just mean I like the colours, I like the, the decor and the textures as well and the lighting. It all does something for me. The number one reason why I like to keep my desk and office aesthetically pleasing, and this is maybe the most important reason, is it makes me want to be here. That's it. I want to be at my desk because I like the environment. I like the feel of it. It feels cosy. It feels like home. I know I'm at home but it feels even more so. It feels like my space, nobody else's. It's simply mine. And if I'm in here and I feel all of those things, I'll start writing or working on a creative project. My top tip, and I say this in the strongest possible terms, is not to have any household or family paperwork in your writing space. No bills, no invoices, no letters from school, no statements, just items that inspire you. And I get that I'm fortunate to have an entire room to myself for my writing. But even if you're at the dining room table or the kitchen table, put all the household stuff in a box and separate it from your writing space. At my old house, I'd have all household and school stuff dumped in my office and it was draining. It also made me procrastinate as I'd tend to that or feel guilty about not tending to it instead of writing. Secondly, as I take a lot of pictures for my writing or to promote my writing on socials, it saves me time by having an aesthetically pleasing writing space. If I'm writing about a book, I often just literally hold a book up against my desk's backdrop and take the photo. I then do a quick edit on my phone, then I upload it. A few years ago, I'd spend hours on creating that perfect Instagram photograph and forget to write. It was pure procrastination and I'm not allowing myself to do that again. So if I have my desk looking how I want it to look with little ceramic houses, with a lighthouse lamp, with a hourglass timer, with pencils and pens in lovely orange mugs, then I'm happy and I save time. I'm productive, I'm motivated and I'm inspired. So let's look at the desk itself. 
this is incredibly important that it's a space that I'm comfortable at. Personally, I like a big desk with lots of space. My desk is a former kitchen table from an antique shop. It has blue legs that I am often tempted to paint to be more in keeping with my aesthetic, but I'm kind of attached to the battered blue legs. As a table, it was a good height. As a desk, it was too high for me. So I asked our carpenters who were working on something else at the time to chop a bit off each leg. Best thing I did. It is so comfortable now. I also have a second desk to the side of my main one that is made out of former scaffolding planks and stained in a walnut stain. Funnily enough, there's even a footprint on there in the stain that's come through over time. It's rustic but smooth and I bought it off Etsy for my son, but my son preferred an IKEA unit for his gaming setup, so it accidentally found its way into my office and never left. I used to have the desks back to back, so it created a square shape, but I recently moved it into an L shape and I really love it. Both are exactly the same height and I use the walnut stained one for a lot of my top down videos. I like the background of it and I like the fact that I can record things away from my computer if I need to. Incidentally, I realise my chair is not an official desk chair. I've tried them in the past and they have not been comfortable for me and this is the best one I've found so far. So please don't be concerned that I don't have a proper desk chair. I changed from a laptop to an iMac some time ago and I don't regret that for a second. My posture is better as I'm looking straight ahead and not down. I know you can raise laptops up and you can have a monitor and that might have worked as well but I just like the clean lines of having an iMac and the fact that there's no extra unit that comes with it as well. It's perfect for me. This is a 27 inch iMac with a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad. And yes, the wallpaper on my Mac is a selection of notebooks. I am obsessed, as you'll soon see. Good lighting is crucial and having the ability to angle it over my work even more so. This blue angle poise type lamp from John Lewis, I think, has been an excellent purchase. To the side of me, I have another lamp. I'm well aware that the days will be getting shorter soon, so that will come on if I'm working in the evening. Plus, I have this lighthouse lamp that I bought from the range last year. They still have them in stock if you like it. The lighthouse for me is significant. I switch it on as I like to think I'm the lighthouse, shining out my beam, attempting to attract readers who need to read my words in order to progress with their own writing or creativity. Okay, let's talk about the little houses. The little houses actually don't represent anything. I think they're all tea lights, but I don't use them as tea lights. I just really like them. I don't know if it's because I like home and I like how they represent my home and the feeling it gives me. I have ceramic ones here on my desk in my living room downstairs. I also have them in a different material. I really, I just really love little houses. My son and his girlfriend went to Georgia Asda a few days ago and I had a photograph come through on iMessage saying, we've just seen these, do you want them? And of course, I said yes, because it says two house tea light holders and I am obsessed. So, here we go. Even in the right colours as well. 
we have this one with a little orange roof and in the back that's where you put your tea light I actually don't use mine as tea light holders I just use them to look pretty on my desk and then we have this kind of mustardy yellow one now we need to find somewhere to pop them I think they were about £10 from George at Asda for those of you who are in the UK. The smell of my office is also quite important to me. Now, my office is actually just off the kitchen, just up some stairs, and there's no door on it. So I often get kitchen smells in my office. So it's important to me that I have a smell that I like at my desk. Normally I'd have lots of coffee, but turns out I'm allergic to it, which I'm absolutely gutted about. So the next best thing in terms of smell is a candle. And my current one has the scent of sweet black coffee. You can't get better than that, really. It also smells of dusty books, maybe a drop of vanilla in there for sweetness, and maybe bonfires as well. I just really, really like it. Other candles I've had in the past have been called the old library or a night at the library. They're just warm scents that make me feel writerly and inspired. In terms of practical desk contents, I have a mouse mat because there are a few lumps and bumps on my table. That's what happens when you have a former kitchen table. And it was annoying me so much when I used the mouse, my mouse would just rock about. So this one is from Aspinall of London and I love how rigid it is. It's definitely paid for itself in sanity many times over. I also have an hourglass timer. This times me for 15 minutes approximately and I use this when I'm procrastinating or just struggling to believe that I can write. I just turn it over, do it for 15 minutes and say to myself just see how you feel Helen. Most of the time I don't even notice the sand running out because I've started. It's just a way of starting when you're feeling perhaps a little vulnerable, perhaps a little scared, or you would just rather be scrolling on social media instead. I have a collection of washi tape. This is useful for sticking things to my wall, but I mostly use it for my notebooks. I mean, I'm going to talk about my notebooks another time, but sometimes I feel a bit frazzled and putting washi tape in my notebook or even colouring in a rectangle in my notebook with my pencils, it unfrazzles me. It just allows my mind to breathe. So washi tape is important from that perspective. It's got practical uses as in physically practical, but also uses as in mentally practical. I've got a box here for post-it storage and stickers. Again, these I use when I'm annotating my non-fiction books that I read for my Substack. I also have stickers that I pop into my notebooks as well. Again, it's one of those mental calmness things that I like to do. And then I've got the usual stuff. I've got a pot of highlighters. I've got a pot of pens. I have black, green and red in the Pilot V5 0.5 range. I have a couple of pencil cases as well that I pop into what I call my house handbag, which is where I carry bits and bobs from my desk with me if I'm going to my bedroom or the lounge or the kitchen and I want them with me just in case. I have a collection of coloured pencils in various mugs as well as some felt tips 
and like I said these are useful for, for simply colouring things in in both my planning journal and my my writing journal it's just a way of me taking a deep breath and then one of the most important things that I have so many of these items are really important but I think digital storage is one of those things that's both boring to talk about but also so necessary i have a massive external hard drive it's a seagate backup plus hub with four terabytes worth of storage and it's one of those that you have to plug into a power source i also have smaller storage sticks that i use for various things and i often then back them up onto the monster storage unit remember back your writing up regularly. And then we have my books and my notebooks. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video about my notebooks soon, but I couldn't not mention them in relation to my writing desk as they are part and parcel of it. At the moment, as I look around, they're scattered all over it. And there are some to my left on my shelves as well. And there are some behind me on the shelves. Ones that I have filled in over time and highlighted pages with post-it notes and stuff like that. They are all there as well. I never throw any of them away. I also have a big A4 notebook that I use for writing my scripts. This one is from Choosing Keeping and my current writing notebook is also from Choosing Keeping and it's got the sprayed edges. Also has the sprayed edges. I think there's something very calming, very grounding for me and also almost like a security blanket having my notebooks all around me i guess they make me see all the work that i've done in the past and it's kind of motivating reassuring that if i've done it all in the past then i can do it again in the present and aesthetically i just really like them then we have books, and these are often books that I've read or part way through reading. I have lots and lots of fiction in my office, all dotted around. I also have a lot of non-fiction. The non-fiction I read is books that will help me with my writing, with my creativity, with being online with my mindset. I've just started a non-fiction book club actually on my Substack. So if I read something or if I hear of a non-fiction book that I think will be something to dissect on my Substack, then I will get it and it often sits on my desk waiting for me to write about it. So the current one is The Success Myth by Emma Gannon. This is September's book of the month for my Substack and you can see where I've got up to. And this is how I use the stickers that I've got in my little green box to mark things in my nonfiction that I'm reading. I also have some fiction as well. And again, I want to be able to write about this in my Substack. So I know I've talked about how the aesthetics keep me organized and motivated and productive and so on but all these other items as well help me with that i have a routine when i come into my office i switch the two desk lights on pull out my diary go through my planning notebook and work out what i'm doing that day previously in in the past i'd arrive at my desk with no idea what I was doing before on previous days and I would spend ages, ages and ages racking my brains trying to figure out where I left off on the last session at my desk. So these notebooks actually help me with my productivity. The routine of switching the lights on, of lighting the candle, maybe even turning the hourglass over, all helps me 
get into that writing focused mood. But incorporating these systems that I have in my notebooks, particularly as well, my big task sheet that is behind me and my planning journal means I know exactly what I'm doing and when. I forgot to mention my mugs, how important they are to me in terms of fueling me, hydrating me and just looking pretty on my desk. So this is also quite important and this is Cornish wear that I really really love at the moment. So that's everything that I have on my desk that helps me be productive, focused, motivated and inspired. Thank you for watching.